Welcome to Internet of Things Integration with RAT Server webinar. My name is Paweł Głowacki, I'm working for Embarcadero as sales consultant uh, and today we are going to focus uh, on building uh, IoT solutions uh, with uh, RAT Server and uh, with RAT Studio. Uh, so RAT Studio uh, provides uh, different technologies for building uh, cross-platform applications uh, for both a mobile and desktop and this application uh, can be natively compiled from the same source code, which is a big thing. Uh, so you can create uh, everything that I'm going to talk about, uh, especially from the perspective of the client application, uh, applies equally to Android and iOS. And also uh, this integrates with a cloud, which means that uh, RAT server is our uh, REST API uh, architecture for building uh, mobile backends for uh, applications uh, built with uh, RAT Studio. And a very strong part of uh, RAT Studio uh, offering uh, is a very hot topic in the industry today, uh, Internet of Things. Uh, so Internet of Things uh, really extends uh, the use cases and the way uh, how people are using uh, technology. Uh, so mobile uh, mobile is no longer the hype thing, it's uh, it's a mainstream, uh, so iOS and uh, Android are clearly uh, leaders on, on the uh, mobile market. And the IoT is the this next big thing. Uh, so with IoT, uh, you can extend existing uh, applications with uh, brand new capabilities. Uh, so adding to uh, application applications uh, things like proximity awareness with beacons. Uh, so your mobile app knows exactly where it is with the accuracy of centimeters instead of just knowing where it is with GPS which does not long, does not work uh, indoor. Also you can uh, work uh, programmatically with all kinds of devices that are not necessarily uh, computers so with Bluetooth LE and other new generation uh, communication protocols you can communicate and uh, collect uh, data from all kinds of uh, sensors and devices which really opens uh, a brand new uh, user uh, cases and uh, new ways to extend uh, user experience. So Internet of Things by Wikipedia is basically everything uh, that you can uh, programmatically connect to and these are different uh, protocols, uh, different ways and uh, we are so much used now to uh, having uh, computers in cameras, uh, cars, uh, smart watches and all kinds of uh, devices can be connected with using all kinds of different uh, protocols and with uh, with RAT Studio both uh, Delphi and uh, C++ Builder we have a complete tool set uh, to uh, build uh, innovative solutions so first of all you want to be able to communicate with all those devices uh, using the protocols uh, that they use so the two most important protocols uh, is HTTP uh, so some of those devices act as a small uh, web server so think uh, as a Wi-Fi access point access point at home that you configure by uh, typing in a special uh, IP address and uh, your uh, Wi-Fi uh, your um, access point uh, turns into a web server uh, so similarly many of those devices also act as a web servers smaller devices like uh, like beacons uh, like uh, heart rate uh, monitors like uh, um, blood pressure uh, monitors typically use a newer Bluetooth uh, low energy standard uh, which is uh, great for um, sending uh, small amounts uh, of data infrequently uh, but without uh, losing a lot of energy so those devices are typically powered uh, through a small um, batteries uh, typical for for watches also with uh, RAD Studio, there is plenty of other technologies that we can integrate with. Uh, so we can also tra integrate with uh, traditional Bluetooth, but also integrate with uh, native platform SDKs uh, on all supported platforms like iOS and Android. <coughs> Another interesting uh, technology in the context of IoT is app tethering. Uh, so with app tethering, we can have uh, any two uh, applications communicating uh, with each other and exchanging data. So this typically uh, means being able to um, use a mobile device and communicate with a desktop device. Uh, so for example, we could have a, a small 
smartphone and taking photos and sending through uh, app tethering uh, to a desktop uh, application that is connected to the database. But there are also, also other use cases when, for example, two uh, mobile devices are communicating with each other. In the context of uh, usable uh, solutions, it's also uh, important to note that uh, we Rad Studio provides uh, FireDuck technology and also the embedded version of Interbase um, database, also SQLite could be used. So there is very easy to implement a local data caching uh, also on a, a mobile device. And uh, one of the topics of today's presentation is a connectivity to the Rad server. So Rad server is a um, part of Rad Studio offering and uh, uh, Rad server uh, make it easy to build uh, REST APIs, but also have a built-in support for IoT, so you can uh, easily um, send information from uh, IoT devices uh, to uh, the web server, and also you can get information from the uh, from the RAD server uh, very easily. So these uh, all capabilities transform in the context of of RAD Studio to to a specific uh, components uh, to specific uh, libraries. Uh, so uh, at the lowest level this is all uh, implemented in a runtime type library or RTL uh, so RTL is shared across uh, different supported platforms iOS, Android, um, Mac and Windows uh, and uh, some of these technologies, um, some of these libraries classes are also surfaced through the uh, high level uh, components so there is a component T-Bluetooth for working with classical Bluetooth uh, T-Bluetooth LE uh, for communicating with arbitrary um, low energy devices. Also specialization of a Bluetooth LE, so special case of a Bluetooth LE is uh, communication with beacons. So there are two components, T-Beacon, uh, which make it easy to uh, build uh, solutions, build apps uh, that work with beacons. And also T-Beacon device component that uh, can make it possible uh, to turn your uh, mobile device into a, a programmable beacon. On top of this, uh, if you are just using beacon components and just uh, plain beacons, uh, sooner or later you realize uh, that if you want to have a precise uh, indoor uh, location, uh, you need to do some kind of a triangulation and use more than one beacon. And these uh, problems are solved through the ready-made uh, solution that is part uh, of um, available through Gedit Manager inside of uh, Rad Studio Beacon Fence. Uh, so this is a complete uh, solution where you have a, a special editor where you can uh, put uh, location of the beacons, their identification, and instead of working on a per beacon basis, you can work on a higher abstraction level level where you can uh, use uh, events like on zone enter, uh, where you define your own uh, zones. So this is a, a very interesting solution, and Beacon Fence is part of uh, of Rad Server. Uh, license. Also, uh, there is plenty of specialized IoT components uh, that are available through Gedit. Uh, so uh, you can obviously uh, build uh, solutions that are based on a just generic Bluetooth LE uh, components. But uh, if you want to integrate with a special component, uh, sp specialized component, or uh, just this particular component. Uh, you can use a um, specially generated uh, component that works with a, a specific device from a specific uh, specific model from a specific uh, vendor, which makes it uh, easy to very quickly build um, IoT solutions. Also, on the other side of the story, uh, you need to collect uh, this data that comes uh, from all kinds of sensors of devices. So, if you start to think about the complete solution, uh, it's not enough that you are able to communicate with the uh, individual IT IoT gadgets. You want to have a complete solution, so you need to have a, like a central hub or central place where you can manage the whole uh, your IT IoT uh, solution and uh, keep uh, store all the data uh, that comes from all kinds of sensors. So this is uh, implemented with uh, RAT server. Uh, there is a concept of a ThinkPoint framework that we are going to look at. Uh, so it's easy to send uh, information from uh, IoT devices to the RAT server and also easy to uh, get this information into a, a application for analysis or all kinds of other things. 
Okay, so this is how the, the get it uh, package manager looks like. So there are those individual uh, components. Uh, so get it is uh, available from a tools menu. Uh, it's uh, powered, uh, it's actually uh, driven by internet. So you need to have a, a internet connection and then Every day, in fact, we are finding some new components uh, like games, but also more seriously, uh, there is a, a, a lot of uh, dedicated components uh, for different uh, types of uh, IoT devices that you can use uh, out of the box. You just need to download it and they will be au automatically installed into the ID and uh, you are ready to use them. Okay, so that's a that's a big picture so let's have a look uh, into the individual uh, technologies that are uh, available as part of of rad studio in the context of uh, iot uh, and uh, rad uh, server so first of all one of the most hyped uh, or most uh, interesting technologies is a location awareness uh, with beacons so beacons are those um, small teeny radio transmitters uh, that can be uh, put in a either fixed locations or attached to a, a certain moving things that you want to identify and very in very infrequently uh, send a small uh, packet of, of data just their identification so in terms of uh, computers it's super infrequently like maybe five times a second uh, the few bytes uh, of data is sent through radio and uh, contemporary modern uh, smartphones uh, knows how to uh, work with Bluetooth LE uh, so they can <coughs> receive this information and at the level of the operating system either iOS or Android or in case of desktop Mac or Windows the operating system notifies your application uh, about the beacon uh, proximity uh, so um, beacons uh, typically there are certain standards uh, but uh, most commonly uh, the, the beacons themselves are identified by three uh, different numbers so there is one uh, UUID which is a globally unique uh, identifier uh, so that typically uh, identifies a, a vendor uh, that produces the, mm, the beacons or you can also program beacons so this could be your own global identifier and then there are two numbers um, in two integer numbers major and minor that is up to the programmer up to the mm, solution designer to uh, create a certain schema uh, how you want to identify your beacons and then beacons you can think about beacons as a kind of a radio QR codes uh, some people are uh, mm, concerned with a uh, privacy but there is no privacy uh, problems with beacons this is really a one-way communication it's really like a beacon uh, for sailors uh, somewhere they see the light from a certain direction so they know uh, where is um, where to go and where to sail so similarly uh, the ap mobile application mobile smartphone uh, can receive uh, information from uh, different beacons that are in the neighborhood so uh, this is not very uh, precise if you like uh, in a sense that uh, depending on a, on a um, uh, vendor of a beacon and depending on a calibration uh, the, your smartphone uh, can your application may be just in interested in a situation that the in the information that the beacon is uh, nearby uh, or uh, maybe it wants to know how close is the beacon and then uh, this is uh, calculated depending on the strength of a radio signal uh, so there is a, a calibration involved so you want to see uh, what is the signal strength from a, a exact um, one meter distance and if the signal is stronger the application assumes that it's closer than one meter and if it's uh, uh, not so strong then it's uh, further from one meter but then a uh, really precise calculation of the location can be done uh, reading uh, through fr from information uh, from many beacons so uh, from the perspective of the rad studio there are uh, the most important uh, unit is system.beacon uh, where there are key types uh, defined and specifically tbeacon manager uh, which is uh, used to uh, 
you can use it as a starting point to do all kinds of uh, things with Beacon. Uh, and there are different standards uh, on the market uh, that uh, also uh, Beacons uh, are uh, supporting and our RTL uh, functionality is supporting. So there is a, a standard, the, historically the first standard comes from Apple, the iBeacon standard. Uh, there were also Alt Beacon, the independent standard. And recently uh, Google introduced uh, just a new um, richer standard, Edistone. So all those standards uh, are supported through the RTL. Uh, so applications built with RAD Studio and compiled for an either iOS or Android or other desktop uh, targets can work with all these kinds uh, of beacons. Also, uh, some of these functionalities surface through the uh, visual components, the beacon and the beacon device that you can just put on the form. But in, in practice, you would probably be just uh, writing code uh, against different classes in the system.beacon uh, namespace. So this is how the beacon component uh, looks like. Uh, it has a uh, uh, different uh, properties uh, that you can use to um, specify uh, the monitor regions. So basically you can specify the um, uh, identifications of beacons uh, that you are uh, interested in. Uh, so uh, you can specify just uh, the UUID uh, and uh, leave a major and minor as minus one uh, and then you will get events, the proximity events uh, from all beacons uh, that uh, are uh, have identification that uh, fits in a certain mask uh, and that's uh, you need to make sure of course that it's enabled to true uh, and then you can uh, start building applications so it's uh, relatively straightforward you just put a tbeacon component on the form uh, you implement on beacon proximity event and you can and you are uh, up and running so let's uh, let's have a look uh, how we could uh, do uh, such a thing. So I'm going to take my other virtual machine here and I need to make sure that it is properly uh, fitted into the screen. Okay, default layout is okay. Uh, so we can just go and f do go for a file, a new a multi-device application, HD form, uh, and uh, we can just go and uh, find a T beacon uh, component. Uh, so th these T beacon component <coughs> you can put on the form, and uh, he, it's a, it has a T uh, monitorized uh, beacon um, collection. Uh, so in this collection you can specify <coughs> the types that, that the major and minor and UUID uh, of that identifies a given beacon. Uh, so yeah, by default this is all zeros and minus one, uh, but uh, in reality you would like to put uh, some data here. And the beacon, um, you can w work with different uh, mm, calculation modes, so it can have a, just a raw data coming from the operating system or just stabilized data, so you don't get uh, too many uh, dirty, if you like, uh, events about the proximity. And here are the uh, some of the mm, mm, events that you can uh, work with. Probably the most uh, useful one is an, on beacon uh, proximity event. Uh, so there are two uh, parameters to this event. Uh, so first of all, uh, you get access to the uh, the iBeacon uh, interface that you can uh, that you can find. Maybe we should just save it and save it somewhere. Doesn't really matter where I'm saving it, but I can now go uh, to the system.beacons if I'm lucky, but somehow I'm not lucky. Uh, so the iBeacon is an interface uh, to the mm, to this um, to the information about beacon, about in identification. And there is also an iBeacon uh, proximity uh, that you can use uh, to find out uh, how far uh, you are from a, from a certain beacon. So uh, let me actually open maybe not a project uh, but this file directly so we can really uh, have a look here if this find declaration does not work for us we can always find uh, this, uh, this unit in a source directory and then you should go into the RTL and there should be a, a system and in this there should be a system um, maybe not RTL, but uh, system common, and there be, should be a system 
beacons uh, somewhere if not here we'll find them uh, source let me find where could be this and uh, probably it's not deferring uh, system source internet not um, that should be somewhere in the I believe RTL but then in which RTL it should be um, net oh, system beacon yes here we are uh, so now we should be able to find uh, the through uh, beacon uh, different uh, different types and here we have a, a T beacon uh, I beacon so that's the uh, interface uh, that uh, you can use to get information about the, the UUID, the major, minor, RSSI is a <coughs> relative strength uh, of the signal uh, so you can uh, read the strength or you can just get a, a distance. Also there is a, a proximity uh, so the proximity is just a, a enumerated value immediate near, far or away uh, so this is in the description here you can actually uh, read that it's uh, the immediate mills that is uh, below a half meter near between half and one and a half meter far is up to five one and a half meter and away is somewhere close but we cannot determine uh, how far it is so that, that's a starting point for building uh, application with beacons uh, so once you're running your application it will uh, basically will receive um, events from the operating system the one step further is to use a um, application for beacon fence uh, so in on the next slide I will have a beacon fence uh, slide so this is an uh, this is a beacon map fence uh, editor uh, you can uh, load uh, mm, uh, you can create a new map where you can put uh, <coughs> locations uh, of different beacons you can uh, load here um, um, a screenshot from a for example floor a floor plan and where different beacons are located and in this way you can define define a uh, different uh, uh, different um, mm, zones and here we have an events on zone enter and on zone exit that can be used to <coughs> find out where you are so this is working on a higher level that working with just beacons where you are interested in the location of a beacon with beacon map fencing uh, you can actually know uh, where you are in terms of a certain certain plan there are different uh, beacon use cases uh, so uh, with beacons uh, you can your application can be aware of where it is uh, so uh, there are many of uh, possible use cases so think about uh, smart crowd management uh, so maybe in a stadium at the every gate uh, you can have a beacon so the the system that uh, manages uh, people getting in into the stadium can notify um, be aware how many people are trying to to queue in through a certain gate and notify uh, to choose a different gate or maybe in the market uh, if you come closer to a certain offering you may get a, a personalized uh, push notification telling you there is uh, something interested interesting uh, somewhere uh, close to you so many of peop many people are interested in beacons and uh, that's uh, with a reason so how this works uh, from a technical perspective so uh, Bluetooth low energy is a radio interface uh, on a certain uh, <coughs> band uh, so it's uh, based on a it's different from a classic Bluetooth uh, so classic Bluetooth is known for example from cars where you can have a, like a hands-free uh, mm, kit but uh, then classic Bluetooth uh, lets you send and transmit a big amounts of data uh, Bluetooth low energy is um, designed for transmitting a very small amounts of data but uh, with a way that consumes a very uh, small uh, amounts of energy so uh, one beacon that is powered through a small coin can last for a year or long so uh, in terms of software there is um, something called a generic attribute profile and that's the uh, specification that um, basically governs how different Bluetooth uh, low energy devices uh, are communicating so the generic attribute uh, profile um, differentiate between the uh, client and, and service uh, so the client uh, is in our case uh, for example a mobile application uh, or smartphone and the server is the device itself 
that uh, can uh, get um, commands and um, work um, depending on what's uh, receiving. So different devices can have a different uh, characteristics and uh, part of a cr characteristic uh, can be a properties and, uh, and uh, value. Uh, so for example if you have a, um, the blood uh, or um, heart rate uh, monitor uh, you may have a different characteristic one for the location of the uh, of the mm, of the your monitor and another one for the actual value that are coming from this uh, device uh, so this uh, with a GATT uh, there is a mm, the way to describe all kinds of uh, devices uh, so uh, you can basically use a certain GATT profile uh, to say that if I'm, a, for example, an IoT vendor and I want to start uh, s uh, selling uh, a, a blood uh, blood pressure monitors, and then I need to look into the look up the GATT profile for uh, this. Uh, mm, how should I build these um, packets of data to be sent out so the other uh, devices uh, would recognize my device as a as a blood uh, pressure monitor? So. Uh, so, for example, here we have a, a specific a profile for for uh, for beacons, uh, so and specifically for the proximity uh, service. So, beacons is an example of a proximity service. Uh, so, we can uh, first of all we have a TX power service, uh, which basically tells us how um, how strong is the signal, and based on this we can um, find out uh, how far is the. <coughs> our client or our smart smartphone uh, from a server which is a, a beacon device so different uh, standards uh, all of those beacons are supported through uh, rad studio so there are different vendors this market is still kind of uh, in its early phases uh, there are some bigger vendors and some less known vendors uh, but most of them are use are um, uh, yeah, adhering to uh, the iBeacon or AltBeacon or Ediston Beacon uh, standards. Uh, so that's um, the way how this um, uh, industry is going. So here is the uh, screenshot from a, a beacon fence with a low with a map uh, loaded into it. Uh, so here is a um, office uh, plan. Uh, you can see there are those circles uh, are uh, beacons and uh, there are uh, some zones defined so rectangular zones um, and uh, instead of uh, have getting events about the proximity of a specific beacon uh, we can work on a higher level of abstraction and we can get um, these events uh, for on zone enter on zone exit so in this way it's uh, uh, it's easy and much better to use it's quite sophisticated mathematics behind it uh, there is a, a monte carlo algorithm uh, used uh, there inside so it's not a trivial piece uh, of software so beacon fence is a client side technology but it's uh, part of a <coughs> rat server licensing okay so rat server uh, rat server um, also is a key ingredient in a building a, a complete uh, IOT uh, solution for um, with 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 Rad Studio uh, so it's uh, it can be used for uh, building a mobile backend so it is a with uh, with Rad server you can do very easy rest api uh, publishing uh, it can send uh, mobile push notifications uh, it has built-in uh, user management it provides uh, api usage analytics and also uh, it can be used to work with with beacons and all kinds of uh, iot devices uh, to collect uh, data coming from from these uh, devices so the rad server architecture uh, so then as part of RAD Studio uh, installation, uh, you will get, um, if you install Delphi or C++ Builder or RAD Studio uh, in the enterprise version, uh, you will get uh, a de development uh, version of the, uh, the RAD server. So historically, there you will see here and there EMS for Enterprise Mobility Services. Uh, you can think about it that EMS is a, a subset of uh, RAD server. So the EMS server uh, is a, a pre-built server, it's an executable so unlike DataSnap uh, you don't have to build, uh, use a wizard to build your server from scratch 
uh, you get the, the server already uh, pre-built, uh, so the EMS server uh, can be used to, uh, to host different um, uh, resources. So there is a number of resources that are already built in into the EMS server, like uh, for example, Edge module. So this is a um, um, resource for working with IoT, but also other resources like, for example, users and groups for users management, uh, push for uh, push notifications, and so on. So every um, RAD server will have a, a system database. This is an interbase database. It is uh, created by the EMS executable uh, the first time it is uh, run, uh, and it stores all the information. Uh, for example, information coming from these uh, different IoT uh, devices. And uh, as a programmers, uh, we can extend the functionality of the RAD server through uh, through package, packages. Uh, so RAD uh, RAD Studio comes with um, wizards to build those uh, EMS uh, packages. Uh, so they are compiled in the form of the BPLs. Uh, so this is a uh, RAD Studio or Delphi or C++ Builder version of a DLL. Uh, so there is a typically an INI e file uh, that has um, information uh, about all those BPL files. So the moment the EMS server starts, it loads all the BPLs. So this is a very uh, pluggable uh, architecture. So you can uh, have a solution and gradually add new resources, replace resources, upgrade resources without uh, disrupting the uh, existing uh, solution. So for uh, IoT, the Edge modules resource is built in, so uh, we don't even need to uh, build our custom uh, packages to extend it. Uh, however, in a moment we are going to see the demo that uh, that does it. So EMS server uh, publishes um, the REST uh, APIs. Uh, so the only way to communicate from the rest of the world is through HTTP or HTTPS. So in this case, this could be different applications, uh, the applications built with uh, RAD Studio tools or with third-party HTTP arbitrary clients. Uh, and in the context of IoT, there are different roles. So there could be an uh, think points uh, or applications that acts as a as a place that collects information from different IoT gadgets and devices, possibly through a Bluetooth LE uh, protocol, and send this information back to the EMS server. But then there could be a different application, uh, maybe a desktop application for uh, reading this data and making sense of it and doing something useful uh, with this data that is gathered uh, from all kinds of IoT devices. Okay, so that's a big picture, uh, the IoT enterprise uh, with RAD server. Uh, so we, we see these think points. So in the very middle of the, this picture, we see there is a uh, RAD server. Uh, so RAD server is a REST API, REST API middleware, but uh, you can use, uh, for example, FireDuck database connectivity to to put data in arbitrary uh, supported databases like uh, high-end databases like Oracle SQL Server or our own uh, interbase. And uh, this uh, you can communicate with um, RAD server uh, through uh, HTTP. And there are think points. So the think points, uh, for example, could be a, a mobile application that communicates uh, with a, a wearable um, sensor for detect for uh, for your blood uh, pressure or, or your heart rate. Uh, so you cannot directly communicate from your heart rate Bluetooth LE enabled um, device uh, with a RAD server. You need to have something in between. So this thing in between this application is called B Think Point. So this could be a mobile app uh, built with, uh, with RAD Studio. Uh, so then th that's the, the big picture. So that's uh, how uh, it works. So we have an, uh, think points at the bottom. Uh, so these are the mm, different uh, uh, applications that uh, acts as an intermediary between the EMS server and the actual uh, devices, IoT devices that uh, possibly are um, only reachable through Bluetooth LE. And then this data is sent to the EMS server. And there could be other applications uh, communicating with the same um, um, EMS server and uh, getting information um, and getting information for analysis or doing uh, other kinds of things. 
So this is uh, the, 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 the demo. In a moment I'm going to to show you a demo but just a few words of explanation to just for this demo to make sense. Uh, so there will be a free uh, free projects in a project group. Uh, so in the middle you see there is a RAT server uh, EMS. So this is a, a package, uh, the package that uh, contain, contains a measurements uh, resource. Uh, so this is a package that is uh, responsible for uh, collecting data uh, from a think point and also uh, for uh, making it available uh, to the client application. So this client on the left side is uh, primarily for analysis, so this could be any uh, application that just connects to the RAD server and is interested in uh, knowing the latest uh, readings from the devices. And the, the ThinkPoint application, the, the, the application on the right hand side, uh, is the application that uh, acts as a, as a bridge between the smart device in our case that's going to be a uh, the heart rate that um, heart rate monitor or sensor uh, for uh, detecting the pressure uh, of blood uh, so we are actually going to emulate this not and uh, connect to the real device but that could be easily done and this data is sent to the uh, rat server so uh, this thing point also needs to register uh, itself with with rat server so then uh, this data is uh, collected in the organized way okay so let me actually uh, jump uh, back uh, to my um, um, rat studio uh, 10.1 berlin update 2 uh, installation to uh, show you this demo okay you can find this demo in a sample projects that comes uh, with rat studio so then it's easy for you to uh, follow the steps uh, demonstrated here. Uh, so in the open, open sample uh, projects um, section there is object Pascal and here we have a multi-device samples and EMS and there is a thing uh, connect IoT demo, no it's not this one, sample demo because I know because I have changed the name of the project group uh, it's a thing project group so think point IoT sample data uh, demo uh, so this demo it contains uh, mm, uh, actually four projects, uh, two different clients, client mobile and client um, client project and mobile client is for analyzing data. The first uh, mm, project that is interesting is this um, RAT server and package, custom resource package. Uh, so this um, only contains a resource um, that has a name measurements and it has a mm, context and it is used to uh, collect uh, data uh, from the edge, uh, from the edge, uh, and it's um, basically uh, forming a tjson object with edge name of the edge and the data coming from the edge. And there is also uh, a uh, special uh, special method to to get the names of different uh, resources uh, called uh, measurements uh, for uh, reading into the uh, into the uh, client application. So here we, there is a TMS uh, internal API uh, method uh, that you can see there is it's a it's a very useful class uh, for programmatically uh, working uh, with the EMS. Uh, so this is <coughs> many of those uh, functionality that uh, the external application could use for for getting like users or modules you if you are inside of the mm, resource you can use the tms internal api uh, to actually mm, in, in invoke those uh, methods directly from inside of the uh, resource so this uh, custom resource uh, package uh, needs to be running so this is a bpl file uh, we are here in a rat studio so we don't have a uh, the, the we need to deploy this to the RAT server so the BPL file as such cannot be run directly so that in the project uh, options uh, you can see there is a debugger and there is a host application EMS uh, dev server so this is this development version of a, a RAT server that uh, comes with RAT studio is installed in a bean directory uh, so the moment that we <coughs> pass uh, th we start this uh, application instead of running the BPL that you, we cannot run, the, this executable will be run and as parameter we are going to pass the name of our resource so it's going to be loaded inside of the our RAT server. Okay, so let's run uh, the RAT server first. 
and this is the uh, EMS development server it's listing on the port 8080 and we can see here uh, different built-in resources so one of the built-in resources is edge modules but also we can see here and there is this uh, measurements uh, resource that we have uh, implemented is also loaded so this the, 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 the server needs to be uh, running and now we can go to the the second project the second project uh, is a think point project uh, so this um, this project uh, emulates um, co collecting data uh, from the uh, from the server uh, so we can um, use this to uh, communicate uh, with with the server and also uh, register it so let's uh, run this application uh, so this uh, application needs to be running and um, com compiled so first of all we want to try to see if we can connect to the um, embark to the EMS server so that's the version information from the server which means that I can connect to it and now we can um, Mm, register the edge module uh, so before we can send some data to the RAD server it the, the edge module uh, needs to be uh, registered it has to have a uh, some kind of a unique name so let's call it uh, IOT demo and we can click on activate and module name is now conflicting with other properties measurement delete measurements so that's for my um, previous uh, test so I'm going to delete the previous uh, edge module named me measurements one that conflicts with the same information which is fine and I can now test if I can connect to it and I can connect to it so now I can start uh, mm, sending some heart rate information so this is uh, some heart rate so this is just sending uh, JSON packages uh, with reading of uh, my heart rate and also simultaneously I can also click on notify to send information about the systolic and diastolic brood pressure so these are the types of uh, information that I would get uh, from a, uh, from those uh, devices uh, now and then so uh, and if you look now into the uh, the this uh, you can see that uh, we have a number of things that were happening so every call to the uh, RAT server is um, uh, registered here so we can uh, see um, get resource endpoints and all kinds of uh, interaction between our application uh, that is interacting with uh, edge modules endpoints so we can unregister module and now we can get a resource uh, endpoint as well so the last thing is to actually go into the client uh, project and this is a client project and this project is just used to to read on information so it's based on the uh, based on the uh, live binding so we are reading uh, data to the uh, memory table uh, through the response so there is a uh, response rest response data set adapter that converts uh, JSON data into a data set and that could be displayed here so now I can just run this and uh, to see uh, what are the different uh, it's compiled for Delphi uh, for for Windows so it can connect and I can execute and I should see this is my IOT demo edge and this is the data <coughs> that is coming from it or I can also see uh, from here execute the the latest data for the heart rate and uh, blood pressure so in this way uh, you can this is really much more to it and in just one short uh, webinar is difficult to go into uh, technical details but the source code of this application is part of them uh, in the demos directory of RAD Studio so you can have a deeper look into uh, how this is uh, implemented and uh, with this um, technology uh, it's easy to to build a complete uh, IoT solutions that you can use to work uh, with uh, with different IoT uh, gadgets devices and connect uh, data and uh, analyze it and uh, have a complete uh, IoT solution with um, RAT server and uh, RAT studio so back to the slideshow so that's again the the same uh, slide that we saw before the demo uh, so in the middle we have a RAT server uh, that acts as a central uh, repository of data and also the REST API uh, server 
so the clients can connect to it that could be any client and can read information from uh, different edges and different uh, sensors and different think points can send this information to the RAT server so they first need to uh, register their edge name and then they can send in uh, information coming from sensors uh, from potentially from different uh, types of uh, gadgets so that's it for this uh, IoT integration with uh, RAT server uh, webinar you can get more information on our documentation website docwiki.embarcadero.com slash ratstudio.an and also a uh, great place to visit and to be a part of our community community.embarcadero.com uh, you can find there uh, all information, the blogs, uh, information about upcoming events you can ask questions, it's a great uh, place for all uh, RAD Studio, Delphi and C++ Builder uh, developers uh, to uh, to be. Okay, thank you very much uh, for uh, watching uh, this uh, webinar.